All right, uh, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, <clears throat> which begins with the 144,000. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakak Radash. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, and His Son's name, His only begotten Son's name is Yahweh Shai. That, th those are the true names of the Heavenly Father. And his only begotten son in the ancient Hebrew, also known as uh, Lashwan Kodash, which means the holy tongue. Once again, all praises and glory is due to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. All right, Bahasham means in the name. Again, in ancient Hebrew. And it's very important to continually praise the name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son, because in the book of uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, when Yahweh Shai taught us to pray, the very first thing he said was to hallow the Father's name. Okay, here it is right here. This is a prayer that Yahweh Shai taught us how to pray. It's found in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter. And when we start at the, uh, the ninth verse, it says this. After now, you clearly see these words are written in red. Excuse me, these words are written in red, which means these are the words that Yahweh Shai said. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. In other words, this is how you pray Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. See, so for his name to be hallowed, which means it's another way of saying praised we would have to know that name. We would have to know the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son to hallow those names. This is how our Lord taught us to pray. Now, on one side, I have the KJV version, the the uh, King James version of 1611. The other side, I have the New Living Translation version, also known as the NLT. It says, the, the same verse, the ninth verse, pray like this, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. See, may your name, not names, may your name be kept holy. So what's the name of the Heavenly Father? Yahweh. And his only begotten son's name is Yahweh Shai. And that's how it's kept holy by us continually praising those names in righteousness. You know, in sincerity and truth. Okay, so that being said, uh, pretty much this video will be a lamb back off a video that I saw earlier while I was um, biking, working out. I almost did the video out there in the field, but I decided to come home and do the video this way. Okay, so hopefully you find it edifying your brothers and your sisters out there. I believe in this knowledge, this truth. So the title of the video is Jacob's Trouble. Apostle Curtis, that's the guy you see here, the bespeckled chap over here. He goes by the title Apostle Curtis. Everybody wants to be an apostle now. Uh, apostle Curtis Lewis is going off. And this video was put up by uh, Elder Manat Zakbar of GMS South Carolina. That's his channel there, GMS South Carolina 08. So without further ado, we're just going to jump into it. You'll find out what this is all about. I'll let uh, this guy, Lewis Curtis, introduce to you what this video is all about. And then we're going to listen to some of uh, uh, the reaction by Elder Manat Zakba to what Lewis Curtis said concerning the topic of Jacob's trouble. So without further ado, let's jump into it. And coming just a few minutes to uh, follow up on a post that I put on YouTube concerning Jacob's trouble. I did uh, a teaching on Jacob's trouble. Most of you probably have looked at it. Uh, Jacob's trouble, is it for the Europeans or is it for Jacob? Has gotten over 11,000 views in less than 15 days, part two has gotten over 7,000 views in 15 days. And I did another lesson entitled, Jacob Trouble is no more, is no more 
than the wrath of God upon those who troubled Jacob. So I've been around the Christian world, the uh, Christendom for some nearly 44 years. And so I remember that doctrine being taught many times. And I have taught that doctrine at times until the Most High woke me up. So that doctrine that's called Jacob's trouble can be somewhat confusing because when the people say as you're about to see is going to be confusing to him it's not confusing to us we that's in the know of the hopeful elect Jacob's trouble is not confusing to us of the hopeful elect but to those that have very little understanding as you're about to see like this guy here it's confusing okay term Jacob's trouble you tend to think that that's trouble coming for Jacob but that ain't what it is that's exactly what it is trouble in the worst way coming for Jacob which Jacob's name was changed to Israel now have we had have the Israelites ever had trouble in the past sort of like a Jacob's trouble absolutely a uh, great example is uh, what happened in 67 AD, going into 70 AD. That was a example, an example of the trouble for Jacob because that caused something called the diaspora. You know, when the Romans were upon us, as a matter of fact, let's go right to it, uh, Luke 21, because it caused the diaspora of our nation, a scattering of our nation. So that was a time of trouble. Okay, but the Bible also speaks about a time of trouble coming as the earth has never seen. So what time period is that talking about? It's talking about now. And that is definitely an example of Jacob's trouble. Okay, we're going to get into it. But first, let's go to the book of Luke 21. And... Uh, and Yahweh was prophesying about the fall of Jerusalem, which began in 67 AD going into 70 AD. Yahweh was prophesying about that during his ministry. Okay. It is right here, the book of Luke 21. And uh, I'll start at the 20th verse. And when ye shall see, these again, these words are written in red, so these are the words of Yahweh Shai, right? And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. Now, was Jerusalem compassed with armies? Absolutely. Those were the armies of Vespasian and then Titus Caesar. All right? And then later Domitian Caesar. But it began with Vespasian and his son Titus Caesar, which represented the Romans. The Romans were what? Edomites. They had surrounded Jerusalem, okay, the city of Jerusalem. You even had a place called Masada where you had a, you know, a group of Israelites that pretty much starved themselves to death or they were starved to death, all right, rather than giving up to the Romans, you know, surrendering to the Romans. They starved themselves to death, all right, the fortress called uh, Masada, okay. So that's another example of Jacob's trouble, okay? Uh, reading on, it says, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, so those were the Roman armies of Vespasian Caesar and then Titus Caesar, which brought on the diaspora, which also brought on something called Masada, which was a fortress, okay? Those were all, those were all examples of times of trouble for Jacob, for Israelites. But there is a time of trouble coming as the earth has never seen. Okay? So let's not forget that. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. The desolation of what? The nation of Israel. The destruction of the nation. Again, the diaspora. The scattering. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. There you go. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter there into, into, into where? Jerusalem, right? And during the diaspora, 
or the scattering, you had many Israelites that fled into north and west parts of Africa, and ultimately the whole of Africa, South Africa, even East Africa. Uh, you had Israelites that fled as far as the Britons, far west as the Britons, meaning England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. You had Israelites that fled as far as the Far East. Okay, you had um, uh, uh, Japan, China, and those Israelites, the majority of them were of the Southern Kingdom. All right, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Now, you did have a scattering of the, the northern kingdom, but if we go back to uh, if we go back to 722 BC, 724 BC, the, the northern kingdom had already been scattered by the Assyrians, right? And that also was a time of trouble. Okay, so you have examples of the times of Jacob's trouble. So I don't know why this, this guy, Lewis Curtis, uh, doesn't look at previous history of, of the Israelites being in times of trouble. I'm giving you some examples. The Assyrian captivity was a time of trouble for our nation, primarily the Northern Kingdom, because they were scattered to Assyria, and then from Assyria they were scattered to the New World, the Americas, North and South America. Predominantly, those were the northern tribes or the northern kingdom led by the tribe of Ephraim. And that was a time of trouble right there underneath the Assyrians. The Assyrians were, were, were vicious unto our people, man. You had kings like Ashurbanipal, Ashurbanipal uh, Shalmanazar. These were titles, you know, Assyrian titles that these men had, Ashurbanipal. Uh, Shalmanazar, you, like I said, was a title. Um, Sargon, kings like that. They were vicious to our people, the Assyrians, right? So um, going back to 722 B.C., 724 B.C., you had the northern kingdom that came over to the Americas. So that was a scattering. That was the first scattering. And then the ultimate scattering was the diaspora, which took place around 67 AD going into 70 AD. And that was the, the total downfall of, of the nation of Israel. You know, the majority of us was ripped out of our land. Okay, like I said, the, the northern kingdom came to the Americas, 722, 724 BC. And then the southern kingdom ultimately came to or, or was scattered across the world. Okay. Uh, namely north and west parts of Africa, and then the Britons over there, uh, uh, England, Ireland, Scotland, and then as far east as China, Japan, and those countries, okay? So those, those were all examples of times of trouble, okay? So this is what we read in here, Luke 21 and 21, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein to. Why? For these be the days of vengeance, a time of trouble, that all things which are, which are written may be fulfilled. Yeah, the Heavenly Father said he would punish us as a nation for our wickedness. The main infraction that we were committing as Israelites was worshiping other gods. And that's a violation of the first commandment, thou shall have no other gods before me. Okay, let's keep reading. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Yeah, because the, the Roman armies, they were killing men, women, and children. Okay, Israelite men, Israelite women, and children. That's why we had to flee for our lives. And again, this is Yahweh Shai prophesying this almost 40 years before it happened. Okay, it says, but woe unto them that are with child, to them... And to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon the, this people. Again, a time of Jacob's trouble. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, the sword of the Romans, and shall be led away captive into all nations. There you go. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, the other nations, the city of Jerusalem in particular, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And we're about 
uh, approaching the time where the rulership of the Gentiles, namely the Edomites and all the other nations that partook in taking us down, mainly the Edomites, we're approaching the time where the downfall is coming. Yahweh is coming to put an end to the kingdom of the Edomites and all the other nations that are above us right now. Because if you check it out, all the other nations led by the nation of Edom, they're above us Israelites right now. And we're on the bottom. Okay, we're on the bottom of, of every nation right now. So Yahweh Shai is coming to bring us back to the top, beginning with the elect. Okay? So, let's get back to the video. Let's, let's listen to that one more time, what this guy just said. Because when the people say the term Jacob's trouble, you tend to think that that's trouble coming for Jacob. So I already gave you examples of trouble that came for Jacob. Now, is it going to happen again? Absolutely. Okay. If you go in the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, this is the prophecy. Daniel 12 and 1. Now, the subheading says here, at the time of the end. The end of what? The end of Esau's kingdom. Remember the scripture, the last scripture I read, it speaks about the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's the time we're heading in. The end of Esau's kingdom and all the other nations that are ruling in tandem with Esau, trying to bring this new world order. Case in point, the Moabites, so-called Chinese. All right, they have a big part in, in, in this kingdom, ruling right along with Esau. You got the so-called Arabs, the Ishmaelites. They have another big part in Esau's kingdom, ruling right along with Esau. So this is the time of the end of the rulership of all nations and the nation of Israel is about to be set back on top because the nation of Israel, the Israelites are the Lord's chosen people. So it says, the first verse, and at that time shall Michael stand up. Who is this Michael? Michael the archangel. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And Michael the archangel is coming back with Yahweh Shai to bring an end to this society and at the same time deliver the Lord's elect. For the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was. Now, has that prophecy been fulfilled, even though it's in the, in the uh, Old Testament? The answer is no. Okay, that prophecy is about to be fulfilled when all hell breaks loose. And that will definitely be the time of Jacob's trouble. It will be a trouble as the planet Earth has never seen. We're reading the prophecy. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. All right? And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Who's that? That's the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. The elect of the nation of Israel will be, be delivered by who? Yahweh Shai. Matthew 24 and 30. And they will have a spectacular deliverance. Listen, there's going to be so much trouble... During the time of Jacob's trouble, the Bible says if um, the Bible says that uh, the elect have to be delivered, or else no flesh shall be left to be saved. Let me see if I can get that. Okay, bear with me for a minute. That's how much trouble there's going to be for our nation. Okay, so don't let any unlearned novice even though he said he'd been doing he had uh, been uh he'd been um involved in that for 44 years you know the statement that he just made lewis curtis he sounds like a goddamn novice and he's lifted up with pride you know the answer is he, he, he doesn't know what jacob's trouble is okay You've had many examples of Jacob's trouble in the past. I gave you some examples at the beginning of this video. But you're about to have the major trouble. Not, not you know, uh, you're about to have the major trouble not too far from now. Okay? Um, here it is right here. The book of Matthew 24 and 21. Let's start there. Again, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. It says, 
For then shall be great tribulation. Now this ties in with what we're reading here in Daniel, the 12th chapter and the first verse. That would be a precept for that. Uh, Matthew 24 and 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. The same thing Daniel 12 and 1 says. Nor ever shall be. Right. And except those days should be shortened. Those are going to be some hellified days. You can throw in the prophecy in the Apocrypha where it speaks about Esau being as a madman sparing none. Because Esau is going to go about trying to totally establish their new world order. And one of the, uh, one of the crowning points of their new world order, as it were, is to make sure everyone is chipped fitted for an electronic device under the penalty of death. In other words, if you don't take this electronic device, you're subject to be put to death, either by guillotine or by torture instruments. You know, you're going to have uh, your detention centers enacted. You're going to have your concentration camps, you know. That's all part of the time of Jacob's trouble because the main people they're going to come after, the wicked elite of Esau, is the Israelites, you Israelites. And that's pursuant to Psalms, the 80, 83rd chapter. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. You know, the fact that we're waking up in droves, we're waking up to our true nationality, not only frightens Esau, but, but also angers Esau as well. Esau is getting angry about that. In particular, the top wicked elite that know the truth that know that they're the Edomites and that we're the Israelites. The fact that we're, that we're having a total recall, like Apostle R calls it, angers them and frightens them at the same time. So they're going to they're gonna take action. They're going to come after us, all right? And uh, some of us are slated to be martyrs for this faith. The Bible speaks about martyrs. You know, the Apostle John saw that in a vision where certain brothers became martyrs for the faith. So they, indeed, there's a time of trouble coming. Let's keep reading. It says, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. That's how wild it's going to get out here. That's how detrimental it's going to get out here. So much trouble, man. So much bloodshed. So much mayhem and chaos that those days have to be shortened. Like it says here, except those days should be shortened, meaning... The hurrying of our Lord, the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right. Even the last verse of the Bible says, even so, Lord, come quickly. Yeah, because if the Lord don't, if, if the Lord coming is not hastened, there's a scripture where it speaks about hastening the, the coming of the Lord. There'd be no what? No flesh left to be saved. Like it says here, except those days should be shortened, they should no flesh be saved. Why? Because... One of the reasons is Esau is going to be as a madman sparing none. Esau is going to be doing a lot of killing to bring in his new world order. And that's really at the behest of the Heavenly Father on the left-hand side. Okay? Because the Heavenly Father creates both sides and he controls both sides. The righteous side and the wicked side. Right? So it says, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, it's all about that elect, those days shall be shortened. So don't tell me there's not going to be no time of Jacob's trouble. This is the proof right there, Matthew 24 and 22. Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. So that is indeed a time of trouble. And that links in right along with Daniel 12 and 1. Let's read it again. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. And at that time of trouble is going to be so detrimental that those days have to be shortened. For the elect's sake, because if not, no flesh are left to, would left to be saved. Because this devil is going to go crazy trying to establish his new world order, trying to claw unto his power and keep his power. Because you, you must understand that when Yahweh Shai comes, matter of fact, let's, let's get that. When Yahweh Shai comes, he's coming to take this man down out of rulership, to, take, to revoke his power. And Esau is not going to go quietly into the night with his power being revoked. He's going to fight to try to keep his power, to try to keep his dream, his hope, aspirations of a new world order, man. Okay, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, but Yahweh Shai is coming to put an end to that. 
All right. Uh, I'm sorry, not 12. It's actually 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and 24. It's a scripture that I read that I read constantly. Okay. Um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 24. Then cometh the end. There's that word, the end again. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the heavenly father, that he is Yahweh Shai, who's, who's on his way, even the father, when he shall have put down all rule. So the heavenly father, Yahweh, he's going to put down all rule, authority, and power using his son, his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. That's exactly what Yahweh Shai is coming to do. Let's read it again. Even the father, when he shall have put down all rule, and all authority and power. The rule, authority, and power of who? The, the Esau and the other nations who are trying to establish a new world order. So when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to put down their rule, authority, and power. Now the point is Esau is not going to uh, Esau is not going to not going to go out without a fight, so to speak. Okay, he's going to fight tooth and nail, as they say, to keep his power. Because his, his, as a matter of fact, let's read the book of Psalms 49. His inward thought is to rule forever. He wants to rule forever. He, does, he doesn't want to relinquish his rulership. So he's going to fight to keep his rulership. And that fight includes massacring, massacring you Israelites out there, especially those that know the truth. Okay? So indeed, the time of Jacob's trouble is coming, man. Why do you think King David said, deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword, from the wrath of the wicked? Okay. They shall be as madmen sparing none. One of the slogans of the New World Order, this is uh, according to, uh, um, what's her name? Uh, Linda Thompson, who put the documentary um, America Under Siege. And you should check that out when you, when you get a chance. America Under Siege. By Linda Thompson, you can find out on YouTube, one of the slogans of the New World Order is expect no mercy when they sent out their Gestapo troops, their military troops. So what is Lewis Curtis talking about? It's obvious he doesn't know what time period that he's in. The scripture speaks about redeeming the days. It, that's in the book of Ephesians. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. That's the quote. Redeeming the time, meaning knowing the time, judging the time, for the days of evil. We're living in the time of trouble. Okay? <laughs> Psalm 49, 11. What's the inward thought of Esau? Beginning with these top banking families. Let's read it. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Yeah, they want to rule forever. They want to relinquish no rulership. They're even going to come against, the prophecy says, they're going to come against Yahweh and the angels. And they're going to lose miserably. You know, Ezra saw that in the vision. So the point is, Esau is not going to easily give up his kingdom. Okay? The inward thought, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. It's talking about the Edomites, beginning with those top banking families. They call their lands after their own names. There you go. Let's read... Um, Okay, um, we'll skip that. Psalm 49, 11. We'll just read the KJV because the NLT version is it's not... Uh, sometimes the NLT version, they go off, man. But a lot of times they be deadly. <laughs> the comparison is deadly to the KJV. But in this case, it, it, a little off there. So we'll just stick with the uh, Psalm 49 and 11 version of the KJV. So going back to 1 Corinthians 15 and 24, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the heavenly father, even the father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Okay, let's read the NLT version of the same verse, the 24 verse. After that, the end will come when he will turn the kingdom over to the heavenly father, having destroyed every ruler and authority and power. See? And that's exactly what Yahweh Shai is coming to do. All right? So there you go. So let's get back to the video. Jacob. But that ain't what it is. Why do I know that? 
confusing because when the so you hear what he said right let's listen, listen again people say the term jacob's trouble you tend to think that that's trouble coming for jacob but that ain't what it is why do I that's exactly what it is okay again we read in daniel which links up with matthew 24 there'll be a time of trouble the earth has never seen you're going to tell me jacob's not going to be involved in that trouble come on man this guy ears not knowing the scriptures i know that because or not understanding the scriptures you find that term in kjv only one time that i can find in jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 how can somebody take a term called jacob's trouble out of a whole chapter there have been many examples of jacob's trouble when we read about the scattering of the northern kingdom by the assyrians they came out the seed of jacob right the israelites the northern kingdom led by the tribe of ephraim they came out the seed of jacob and they were in trouble with the assyrians so much so the assyrians took them to assyria in captivity that was trouble so there have been many forms of jacob's trouble when the southern kingdom 67 a.d 70 a.d was attacked by the romans okay that was another form of jacob's trouble because the southern kingdom that was the seed of jacob judah benjamin and levi okay and then establish a whole doctrine and preach it all around the world and everybody believing it's a trouble coming for jacob and nothing in that chapter agrees with it all right we're gonna get into another lesson all oh, praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. This lesson will be entitled Jacob's Trouble. Apostle Curtis Lewis is going off. Apostle Curtis Lewis is going off. Now, one thing I got to say about this video, um, the brother Elder Karadzaba, I'm sorry. Not Elder Karad Zaba, I meant to say Elder Manat Zakba. That's what I meant to say. Uh, he makes a lot of good points in this video. A lot of strong points in this video. So we're going to go through, through a few of them. And then I'm going to wrap this video up. But you want to, you definitely want to check out this video here by Elder Manat Zakba of GMS South Carolina. It's an excellent video. Even the comments, you know, many were saying that's a pretty good video you did, Elder which I, I, I concur, you know, you made a lot of good points in this video concerning Jacob's trouble. So let's go. Now you saw a video in the beginning, a short clip from this video right here, right? It's entitled, people have misunderstood what Jacob's trouble is all about. It comes from an individual that calls himself Apostle Curtis Lewis. He misunderstands what Jacob's trouble is all about. This guy here calls himself Apostle Curtis Lewis. All right, the dude is is like a Christian almost, like you know, like it's a Christian, very Christiany, like an Israelite Christian type of deal. I don't really know how you would. And when I first seen this video, the first thing I thought about was why is this guy's head covered? He's got a lid on his head, as in a hat. That seems to be a trend now, with these Israelites to wear hats on their head, while they prophesy. Or teach if you can call it that and what they don't understand is they, they are disrespecting them themselves dishonoring themselves it is right here these are the words of the Apostle Paul first Corinthians the 11th chapter and the seventh verse for a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of the Heavenly Father. Now, when you go into the history, it's in uh, the book of uh, Second Ezra. No, I'm sorry, in the book of Maccabees. It's in the Apocrypha. It speaks about Jason, the high priest. Right? As a matter of fact, let me see if I can find it for you. Jason... We 
We're just going to go right to the point. Uh, 2 Maccabees 4 and 12. Let's go there. What you're about to see is uh, you had this, the Bible calls this Jason, who was a fake high priest. He got that position by wickedness. He was not a true high priest. The Bible calls him an ungodly wretch. All right. In other words, he was a scumbag. And one of the things that he did was make the men in the ministry wear hats. Which was an ungodly custom. This is what we're about to read. So that was 2 Maccabees 4 and 12. Let's read that. So if you look at this Apostle Lewis Curtis, he's got a hat on his head. All right, so that right there lets me know that Yahweh Shai is not dealing with him. The spirit of Yahweh Shai, which gives us all truth, 100% truth, is not dealing with that guy. And obviously he's ignorant to the history of Jason and how he made the young men wear hats to disrespect the ministry. Second Maccabees 4 and 12. I want to get that part where it says uh, ungodly wretch. This Jason character was an ungodly wretch. In other words, a wicked Israelite. Like the scriptures say, uh, among my people are found wicked men. And guess what? The, uh, J this Jason character was one of them. see where I should start. Uh, let's start at um, the 7th verse, 2nd Maccabees 4 and 7. But after the death of Seleucus, when Antiochus, some say Antiochus, called Epiphanes, which was an Edomite, took the kingdom, the kingdom of who? The Israelites. Jason, the brother, which in particular was the, the, um, the southern kingdom, because by then the uh, northern kingdom had, had already went into captivity underneath the Assyrians and then ultimately came to the Americas. So this kingdom that is talking about here, the majority was the southern kingdom led by Judah. All right. The southern kingdom consisted of Judah, Benjamin and Levi. Uh, took the kingdom. Jason, the brother of Onias, labored underhand to be high priest. See, labored underhand. So he was a scumbag and he became high priest. Promising, which was a position, high priest was a position in Israel back then. It was, it was, a, it was one of the uh, professions of the Israelites to be high priest. Uh, one, one name that comes to mind is Caiaphas. He was high priest during the time of or Caiaphas. Some say Caiaphas, Caiaphas. He was the high priest during the time of Yahweh Shai's ministry. Anyway, reading on. Promising unto the king by intercession. What king? The king uh, Antiochus or Antiochus. Promising unto the king by intercession 303 score talents of silver. So pretty much this Jason ungodly wretch sold our nation, sold us out to the Edomites, in particular King Antiochus. Okay? And, and, uh, and of another revenue, 80 talents. Besides this, or beside this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise. That's called a gymnasium today, or a gym, which the word gym comes from the uh, Greek word gymnos, which means naked. So that was another infraction against our law. You know, the Heavenly Father speaks about us not showing our nakedness. Back then, when they used to exercise, they used to exercise in the nude. There's many mur murals and um, paintings of that period. You know, Israelites in, in the Greek civilization, of them exercising in the nude. Okay? Um, one example that comes to mind is uh, uh, you had a vase or vase. Some say vase. You had a vase or vases. Oh, that's a word that showed um, paintings 
of Israelites exercising in the nude, you know, especially during the Olympics. Okay? So here we have this Jason character building what? A place of exercise, which was a, a heathenistic custom. If he might have license to set him up a place for exercise and for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. See? In the fashions of the heathen. And to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochans. Right. Following this guy, King Antiochus, which was an Edomite. A heathen. So can you see why the Heavenly Father was violently upset with the nation of Israel? This was the wickedness that our people were doing. Which when the king had granted and he had gotten into his hand the rule, he forthwith brought his own nation to Greekish fashion. So he sold out. This Jason character who labored underhand to become high priest sold out our nation, man to the Edomites and the royal privileges and the royal privileges granted of special favor to the Jews by the means of John, of John the father of Eupolemus who went ambassador to Rome for amity and aid he took away and putting down this is all the wickedness that this Jason character did and we're going to find out about this hat thing and putting down the governments which were according to the law. What law? The law of the Heavenly Father. He brought up new customs against the law. Right, the customs of the Edomites, which were heathens, are heathens. For he built, for he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection. And made them wear a hat. Made them wear a hat. So this wicked Israelite not only sold out our nation and pretty much abolished the Heavenly Father's law, the statutes, commandments, and turned our nation onto heathen, heathenish customs, right? He also made them wear what? A hat. Now such was the height of Greek fashion, see? not Israelite fashions, Greek fashions, an increase of heathenish manners, like wearing a hat. So, hold up, man. This 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 cat here, this dude here, he's, he's a heathen. Okay? He's got a hat on his head. Christian right? type of deal. I don't... He's a goddamn heathen. You can clearly see it. See that? A hat on his head. And he called himself trying to break down the prophecy of Jacob's trouble give me a break man for he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection and made them wear a hat <laughs> now such was the height of greek fashions an increase of heathenish manners through the exceeding profaneness of jason so it's profane for you to wear a hat in the ministry it's it's an example of profanity Jake's always talking about profanity. You you using profanity. Well, I just gave you an example of profanity. You wearing a goddamn hat in the ministry. You are profane, man. You are exhibiting an example of profanity. Now that word profane, profanity, comes from the Latin profanum, which means outside the temple. So anything that's outside the temple of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, meaning this knowledge, this truth, the temple begins with this knowledge, this truth, Anything outside of it is profane. There you go. Now such was the height of Greek fashions and increase of heathenish manners through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch. There you go. And no high priest. <laughs> he, he, was no, he was not a high priest. Okay. So we just read in these verses all the... the uh, you know, the uh, what, what they call that all the receipts, like they say, of the wickedness of Jason. And one of those receipts was to wear a hat, he made them wear a hat, just like this clown over here has a hat on his the Christian head. type of about deal. I don't really know how talking about uh, there's no trouble coming for Jacob, that whack ass breakdown of Jacob's trouble. But let's listen some more. The, the voice you hear now is uh, Elder Manat Zakbar 
he's going into the madness of this uh, Lewis, Lewis Curtis or Curtis Lewis. You would describe it, but he's clearly going off. We're going to explore it in the scriptures. Now, you can see here from his chat. Oh, before I go back. Now, I went into the history in Maccabees, right? That's why it's so important to go into the history. Now, let's go to the scripture where the Apostle Paul said, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 7, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, like as in wearing a hat, especially when you're involved in the ministry, especially when you're involved in the ministry, right? You got your head covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of the Heavenly Father, but the woman is the glory of the man. Now, it's very heavy that the Apostle Paul said that because he was speaking to the Israelites in Corinth, Greece. Now, remember, when you go back to the time of the Maccabees, right, which, which was a few hundred years before Apostle Paul came on the scene, many of our people were corrupted by the Edomites, which at that time were calling themselves Greeks. And one of the major footholds was the city of Corinth which was part of the Greek empire, okay? So that was the Apostle Paul speaking to Israelites, the descendants of Israelites that were once corrupted by the Greeks, namely King Antiochus. You even had Israelites that started calling themselves Antiochans. And that reminds me of the scripture, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 4, where it speaks about uh, they shall discontinue from their heritage. That's another example. How the Israelites became Hellenized following the ways of the Greeks. You had Israelites that were left off from the Hebrew and started speaking Greek. Okay? So one of the many things they did to corrupt themselves was to wear hats. They were wearing hats, even in the ministry. But the Apostle Paul said, a man indeed ought not to cover his head. All right? Um, there's one more. There's one more scripture. I'm trying to. Here it is right here. Actually, it's in the same chapter. 1 Corinthians 11 and 2. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Ordinances according to Yahweh Barshim Yahushai. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai. And the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. Every man praying or prophesying, like uh, Curtis Lewis or Lewis Curtis, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. Now we have to go back to the history. We read about the history of Jason, right? The ungodly wretch, that's what the Bible called him. He made the young men wear hats in the ministry. And he built gymnasiums and he did a lot of profane, wicked shit. We just read it. So this is why the Apostle Paul said, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. Because that was a practice of the heathens. That was a practice of a heathenish custom brought on to us by the Edomites at that time, which were calling themselves Greeks. Okay? So that's why the Apostle Paul said it. What we just read here. All right? So you go back to this guy. He has a hat on his head. We're going to explore it in his scriptures now. You can see here from his chat that people don't get it. It says this person. So you might say, well, why am I making such a big deal about the guy having a hat on his head? Well, I just showed you in the scriptures. You dishonor for your head. So the spirit of Yahweh Shai is not dealing with this guy as he goes into, into his lame breakdown of uh, Jacob's trouble. Talking about the guy here on the screen. All right. Apostle Curtis Lewis. And he's no apostle. The word apostle means sent away. Does he go out on the streets and teach the word? The answer is no. I've, I've never seen him out on the streets teaching the word every week, week in, week out, like we do. And then these guys are slick, man. These, these phony pastors, they are slick. And the Bible speaks about them. These phony, know-nothing, slick pastors. Let's read about it. Ezekiel, these, these 
false prophets, false pastors. Ezekiel 13 and 4, O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Yeah, they're slick. You know, back in World War II, you had this uh, German general named Erwin Rommel. And his, his uh, during World War II, his particular location was the north of Africa, the deserts out there. And he, he would run the Panzer Division. You can look that up. Well, he had the nickname the Desert Fox because of his slick tactical maneuvers of the World War II tanks. Okay, Ir Erwin Rommel was his name. He was called the Desert Fox because of his slickness in war. So this is what is meant by, O oh, Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Yeah, they're slick. Like this guy, all these years we've been out there, that's another point that um, Elder Manat Zakba made. Like I said, in his video, he made a lot of strong points. One of the points he made was all these years we've been out there beginning to fell the pus town down. We've been telling you about Jacob's trouble, teaching you, getting your minds prepared for Jacob's trouble. That guy wasn't around. That guy, uh, Lewis, or Curtis Lewis, all of a sudden now he pops up on the scene with his stellar breakdown of Jacob's trouble. The dudes are slick, man. Where was he when we were out there on uh, 34th and 7th Avenue pushing this gospel? More than what? More than uh, 10 years ago, more than 15 years ago. Dude wasn't around. Let's read. It says, you have not gone up into the gaps, meaning the streets. That's what that's talking about. Neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle, to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. So the point is, the word um, apostle means sent away, and we're sent away where? To the streets. It, the scriptures say, go ye to the highways and the byways and command my people to come in. So you, the street ministry is very important in this thing of ours, the street ministry. Uh, that apostle Curtis Lewis, to my knowledge, he doesn't have no street ministry. Okay, we, we can week out. So he's not credible, man. He's not a credible witness of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Let's keep reading. It says, they have seen vanity and lying divination. Yeah. Talking about the, uh, uh, Jacob's trouble. There will be no Jacob's trouble. Or his breakdown of Jacob's trouble is the ones that's going to be troubled is the nations for messing with us Israelites. Well, eventually they're going to be punished. The Edomites and all the other nations exactly for messing with us Israelites. But when it speaks about Jerah in particular, that's not the correct breakdown for Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, is the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, it's talking about the other nations coming against us, namely the Edomites, because they're trying to set up their new world order and they want to get us out the way. Psalm, the 83rd chapter, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Okay, so that's what that, that's talking about. The scripture speaks about rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why the scripture said in Ezekiel, that these false pastors are slick. They're foxes in the desert. They're slick. They have seen vanity and lying divination. See? Saying the Lord saith, and the Lord have not sent them. The Lord didn't send this uh, uh, apostle, because the word apostle means sent away. The Lord didn't send, send that apostle, Curtis Lewis. And how do we know that the Lord didn't send him? By the lies that he's teaching. All right? The fact that the Holy Spirit is not working with him to bring that to bring the correct breakdown. And a major example is the, the guy's wearing a goddamn hat on his head. <laughs> Come on, man. The Lord, the Spirit of the Lord ain't dealing with him. The Lord saith, and the Lord have not sent them. See? And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Yeah, all you have to do is go to that his webpage and you can read some of the comments, which Elder Karatza, I keep saying Karatza, Elder Manat Zakba. Uh, was doing in, in the video. That's why I tell you to go and watch the video that Elder Manat Zakpa did. Because he's reading some of the comments. And you can see how bugged out the, the people are that listen to this 
Apostle Curtis Lewis. That's what it says right here. It says, uh, they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord had the Lord said, that's what Apostle Curtis is saying. The Lord said this, the Lord said that, and the Lord have not sent them. Right. And again, there's, there's, there's clues that you can see for yourself that would, that would shows you the Lord had not sent him. The Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh, is not dealing with him. Okay? The Lord have not sent them, and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Yeah, again, go to that, go into the comment board of this Apostle Curtis Lewis, and you read some of the comments, people actually, mostly women, these silly women, like the scriptures say, silly women laden with sins, right? They trust in the words that this guy is saying, Lewis Curtis, or Curtis Lewis. Have you not seen a vain vision? Yeah, his vision is vain. And have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. Yeah, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through his son, Yahweh shall have not spoken to no Apostle Curtis Lewis. He's not a credible witness. Okay? Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies. Oh, there'll be, uh, Jacob is not going to be in trouble. There'll be no Jacob's trouble. Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord power. There you go. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that, have, that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Uh oh, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord uh, Power, which his name is Yahweh. So this, this uh, Apostle Curtis Lewis, which I don't see him repenting, he, he's, he's firm in his madness. He ain't going to make it, man. When the destruction comes, he's going to go right up with that destruction, Okay. There you go. So let's get back to the video. People don't get it. It says this person, B. Smith, thank you for clearly explaining Jacob trouble, which, is, you know, he didn't explain it. V's, I, I See, he's reading the comments of that page. Uh, that page, people have misunderstood what Jacob's trouble is all about by Apostle Curtis Lewis. He's reading the comments of the of the people that are just as blind as Curtis Lewis. Like the scripture just said, they made others. Let's read that again. That's worth reading. Right? The sixth verse, they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, the Lord saith, and the Lord have not sent them, and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. See? And that's proven by the comments that Elder Manat Zakba is reading of that page. Used. This guy, Apostle Curtis Lewis, with his lying divination. So a woman, of course, they don't read all of it on purpose. When I read it, it puts a smile on my face. Yah's oh, mercy God. and love for his people is priceless. It's always you women. Always. Running your damn mouth. Be quiet. You don't. As the Bible says that the women ought to be quiet. But they have a hard time with that, especially the so called black woman. She has a hard time keeping her mouth shut. Understand the Bible, you don't got nothing to say. Anyway, this dude, Apostle Curtis Lewis, he's going off. And when I did, a, you know, the, the way I found out about this video, it just came up in the recommended feed. Now, I don't know if this dude is tagging, you know, putting uh, whatever, he's, whatever tags he's using, but this came up on several brothers' recommended fees there have been a couple of brothers that already addressed this i got a comment from somebody earlier asking a question so which you know caused me to remember because really in the beginning i wasn't going to address this dude because you know he's so damn low level to the point where you know what's the point but the spirit had to come up anyway now brothers are starting to make videos on it and we see that there's a need to give out the true understanding of Jacob's trouble because this guy, this guy doesn't get it. And those people that are watching him, they bugged out. They don't get it. So <clears throat> we're going to go into it now. You can see several videos that this individual has made. And you can see him. He got that Christian feel. Got his lady, you know, on his uh, avatar and whatnot. You're just, just weird, you know. 
But according to this guy, he's all in thinking if you can just read Jeremiah 30 and understand it. Obviously, he never heard of precept upon precept, line upon line. I mean, you don't, you're not going to read one chapter and get a whole doctrine from one chapter. Of course not. But you get it from all over the Bible. Anyway, when you read in his some of his videos, yeah, that's, it says... That's a good point. The scriptures say, whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For, for precept must be upon precept. And uh, just like Elder Manat Zakbar just said, this 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 apostle Curtis Lewis, he's, he, he doesn't know how to properly apply precept upon precept, okay, to get the full understanding of the scriptures. He doesn't know how to do that because the Holy Spirit is not working with him. Okay, the spirit of Yahweh Shai is not working with him. That's why he had that hat on his head. Case in point. Okay. Jacob's trouble, is it for the Europeans or for Jacob? Now, you always notice when you come across these little weird Yah Israelites, they always refer to people as Europeans. The so-called white man didn't come from Europe, whether you know it or not. All right? They're the Edomites. They ain't no fucking Europeans. They ain't no Europe in the Bible. They're never right. at any time referred to as Europeans, and that's not their homeland. And I believe Europa, with the term Europeans, came from Europa. I believe she was a queen, Queen Europa. I believe she was of the seed of Japheth. But that's that scripture. It, it says, um, uh, it speaks about the covering caste over all nations. This is how Esau has been able to hide themselves from who they truly are, which is the Edomites. They go by all these different false nationalities like French, German, Italian, like he, like he just said, Europe, Europeans. If, if they're of the seed of the Edomites, Esau, then that's exactly what they are. They're Edomites. That's their true biblical nationality. And they, ha they had to hide themselves, right? They had to hide themselves in order to maintain rulership and wickedness. But now they're being exposed. This is what the Apostle Paul was talking about in 2 Thessalonians, that man of sin be revealed, be, be exposed. Those are the Edomites. They're the people of sin. Okay? So like I said, in this video, uh, Elder Manat Zakbar makes a, a lot of good, solid points concerning Jacob's troubles. So you want to go check that video out. But I think I've said enough. Okay? So the, the combination of watch, if you haven't watched Elder Manat Zakbar's video, now that you've watched my video, you can go and watch his video, and then you really get a good understanding of Jacob's trouble, and you'll see the, uh, the you'll see the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? For the word that comes to mind is ineptitude of this, and I, I know if you don't know what it means, you should look it up, you know, we teach you to look up your words here, you know, in our lessons, you actually learn new words meaning of new words, you actually learn new words, um, you will see the ineptitude of this apostle Curtis Lewis, and you'll see that he really doesn't know what he's talking about concerning Jacob's trouble. He's talking about the, the Most High showed him. Come on, man. The Heavenly Father ain't spoken to you, man. The scripture said in Jeremiah, I have not sent these prophets, yet they run. Run in what? Their mouth. The Heavenly Father ain't sent you. You're no apostle, okay? Curtis Lewis, you're lost, man. All right, so that being said, I'll end it there, and we go on to the next one.